Hey you guys and welcome to another video. So today po I'm going to share to you the debate po that happened during our College of Law days which talks about legalization of same-sex marriage dito sa Philippines. So if you're interested then keep on watching. By the way, I'm Jeremiah and I upload law school and law study related vlogs. If you are new to this channel, please don't forget to click subscribe and click the notification bell sa tabi ng subscribe or you can just simply click the click here na circle dyan sa my corner. So Let's get to the video. Hey you guys and welcome nga po to another week and welcome to another upload. So today po is, I'm, I'm just going to share to you the debate that happened po sa school namin during po ng aming College of Law days. So one of our activities during sa College of Law days is, yun nga po is the debate. And this debate po is talking about the issue po na meron tayo ngayon which is about the legalization of same-sex marriage dito sa Philippines. This video is a very long video so if you're not interested then I will understand if you're going to skip this one. But for those who are interested then just keep on watching. And you will learn a lot from the sides po ng affirmative team and the negative team. And also, disclaimer, I asked my classmates because majority of mga debaters po sa video na to are my classmates and I asked for their permission to post this one online. The issue po is, is a hot topic and this one is very sensitive. If you are a very po na, if you are firm to your values and to your beliefs, then pasintabi lang po, this is very sensitive po na topic. So, if you cannot agree with, with the sides of of the debaters then I can understand and we respect your opinion as well so again the views and the opinions of our debaters do not reflect the views and opinions of our class of our dean of our faculty and staff our department and our entire university so guys let's get to the first affirmative speaker today the Supreme Court fulfilled the words written upon its building Equal justice under law by Senator Bernie Sanders on same-sex marriage. LGBTQ is an acronym for lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, or still questioning their orientation. According to the Williams Institute's research, the LGBTQ easily represents 4.5 to 10 percent of the population of each country in the world today. Allowing same-sex marriage promotes equality and lessens social stigma. Homosexuality was considered a mental illness up until 42 years ago. Imagine a loved one being labeled as mentally ill just because they are gay. Is this the kind of society we live in? According to French Watchman Blay, a renowned French psychologist, societal love should be non-coercive, non-divisive, and non-judgmental. When society gives itself the chance to change and the opportunity to grow for the greater good, it is truly transformative and very beautiful. Same as when the world finally accepted women's right to suffrage in the early 1900s. The passing of that law, that recognition, that right, revolutionized how we live in the world today. Allowing more opportunities for women to grow and contribute in society because it is only fair and right to allow those who obey the law a voice in making them. I am here to posit three points of necessity and beneficiality of recognizing the LGBTQs and their right to marry the one they love regardless of gender. Today, we have the opportunity to give society a chance to once again transform into a better version of itself. Number one, health. Failing to recognize gender equality and preventing the LGBTQ from being with people they love hinders mental health, well-being, and social mobility. That is according to the World Health Organization. James Cook University's wide-scale research also suggests that the members of the LGBTQ generally experience worse mental health outcomes than their heterosexual counterparts. This is due to stigmatization, discrimination. They are eight times more likely to commit suicide, six times more likely to get depressed, and three times more likely to take drugs and have risky sex. As a society, these are numbers that we cannot ignore. 
They are real. They are happening. The stigmatizing LGBTQ and respecting their right to marry the one they love also destigmatizes HIV, AIDS, STDs as something that is only happening to them because people are more aware of what it is and they also become more willing to understand. DOH, 2012. Allowing same-sex marriage will aid in the resolution of mentioned issues as married couples are more inclined to be monogamous. Number two, education. In 2014, the US NDP and USA in their study of the Philippine LGBTQ said that once the stigma of LGBTQ is removed, it will open doors to educate everyone in the understanding of the LGBTQ community and promote research into their psyche. The Psychological Association of the Philippines stated that the LGBTQ experienced stigma, prejudice, and discrimination due to media portrayal that they are frivolous, untrustworthy, or even predatory. <coughs> They often confront social pressure to hide, suppress, and even attempt to change their identities and expressions as conditions of social acceptance and to be able to enjoy their rights to the full. Data collected by PH LGBTQ Hate Crime Watch says there are approximately 164 cases of murdered LGBTQ members in the country as of 1996 up to 2012 alone and they have been steadily rising in recent years. Number three, economic impact of LGBT marriage. According to Griffith University in 2017, in the economist's point of view, love and companionship are a particular type of commodity. They cannot be purchased, they cannot be traded in the market, but they can be produced in the home. And it is for the happiness and contentment of its members that it's generated. It is important that these commodities are not only produced efficiently, but they need to have better quality as well. <clears throat> Nobel laureate winner Gary Becker noted that heterosexual and homosexual couples will generate different patterns in terms of commodities that they produce, but still, marriage will generate some productivity and efficiency gain for couples irrespective of their gender. In the U.S. alone, after same-sex marriage was approved in all the states, it injected additional $2.5 billion income solely from homosexual marriages. When love wins, the economy wins as well. Ladies and gentlemen, let us all aspire to become better. Let us allow ourselves to take steps forward as a nation towards better health, better education, and economy for all people. For we are all Filipinos, regardless of our sexual orientation and gender identity. <clears throat> Same-sex marriage is not a privilege. It is equal rights. Thank you. I am now ready for the intercourse. I call upon the second night of this speaker. You look dashing today. <laughs> Uh, here are my questions. So, you mentioned earlier three points to support your argument saying yes. that we have to legalize same-sex marriage, right? That is correct. Okay. Uh, first is health, that That's right. affects mental health uh, of the LGBT. And right. then second is that we have to pass this law so that we can educate people against discrimination. That's right. Number three is that this would affect our, or better our economy. That's right. Okay. Let me just ask you this. What are your thoughts um, on the Constitution in relation to same-sex marriage? Same-sex marriage is constitutional. Okay? Why do you say so? The Constitution never defined marriage um, as between <coughs> men and women. Let there. Um, well, the Constitution is actually not explicit in saying that same-sex marriage <coughs> is um, that's no. right. It was constituted. Uh, it was uh, we have to go um, back characterized to the, as an inviolable social institution. We have to go back to the intention of the framers, which is an extrinsic aid in determining the statute. Now, the intention of the framers is that the uh, marriage that we are <coughs> contemplating here in the Philippines, that it's a marriage between people of the opposite sex. But the sex. constitution is so also based on traditions. That, 
argument. Um, let me end. Let me continue with um, my answer first. Have to, um, okay, so sir, so I say sex marriage or are you moving on? Your time will come for the speech, sir. Please let me answer your question. Please make your point. The Constitution also follows traditions. As tradition goes, the Philippines is actually one of the earliest civilizations to acknowledge homosexuality. As a matter of fact, what is we worshipped, we worshipped, according to the US NDP and USA, we worshipped the Did values and honor the Baha'i They were considered, let me finish that? my answer, respect my time please. Again, the Constitution is also based on tradition. The Baha'i were also homosexuals. Actually, they were homosexuals. And they were worshipped for having sure two personalities, of having men and women. Women, and they were transvestite. They were wearing the gender that they represent. Now you're saying that we have to pass this law in order for us to, um, for discrimination not to exist anymore, right? So, isn't that a sweeping generalization? What is your basis then, saying that if we have to, say that if we pass a law that we can now eliminate discrimination? Okay. So, discrimination is a very broad word, but in this sense, in this resolution, we are talking about marriage. Now, passing same-sex marriage will remove the discrimination. The topic of this mm -hmm. debate is same-sex marriage. So, in that context, we are expressing discrimination against the LGBT. So, what is your basis? And to my then? point, the basis that uh, discrimination will be removed were those studies in the U.S., in Australia, Just in so France. that you know, though. Thank you. Speaker uh, said that uh, same-sex marriage is, is constitutional. Let me explain in my speech that it is not. Ladies and gen gentlemen, good morning. The issue at hand to be resolved is the legalization of same-sex marriage. We, on the negative side, submit that same-sex marriage should not be allowed in the Philippines because our constitution do not sanction such marriage. In other words, it is contrary to our laws. I have prepared four arguments to support our contention that legalization of same-sex marriage should not be allowed in the Philippines. First, same-sex marriage is void as it is not sanctioned by the laws. Second, our history and tradition would tell that marriage was and always been between a man and a woman. Third, that the stipulation that marriage should only be between man and woman does not violate equal protection laws. And lastly, there is no need to restore the status quo. On my first argument, it might seem that no provision in the 1987 Constitution defines marriage. It merely stated that under paragraph 2, article 15, that marriage is an available social institution and is the foundation of the family and it shall be protected by the state. The proponents of same-sex marriage might say that it is ambiguous and, that, and it does not at all say that marriage between same-sex is not allowed. But based on the, on the records of the Constitutional Commission, the legislative intent of the framers of the Constitution is to preserve the traditional concept of marriage which should be between a man and a woman. This definition is reflected in the Family Code or Executive Order 209 under Article 1 of the Family Code, the marriage is defined as a special contract or permanent union between a man and a woman entered into in accordance with the law for the establishment of conjugal and family life. Further, under Article 2 of the same code, is stated two essential requisites of marriage without which marriage shall be considered void ab initio. It is the legal capacity of the contracting parties who must be male and female, and the consent freely given in the presence of the solemnizing officer. Ladies and gentlemen, it is apparent from the provisions of our laws that marriage between same sex is void and should not be allowed in the Philippines. In the second argument, if we trace the origin of the marriage to laws in the Philippines, our tradition and history would tell that marriage was and always been a union between a man and a woman. Before the before the advent of colonization, Philippines already had customs founded on ancient Malay and Muslim laws. Marriage customs during those times would include that the groom would serve the parents of the bride in their home for months or even years before marriage. We call it Pamamahal. Dowry was also demanded of the groom and his family and the breach of the promise to marry request that damages be paid in the form of property loss. During the Spanish era, 
There were two forms of marriage that was recognized both by the church and the civil power. The first form would require that spouses would present themselves to the priest for his blessing which is celebrated in the face of the church. The second form which coexisted with the first form was originally called marriage, a urus, that is made with an oath but without the external ceremony of blessing of the priest. Also in the history of matrimonial law in the Philippines, the influence of the church laws applied and interpreted by their missionaries were paramount. In these times, the law was ecclesiastical in content, although frequently shunted through civil, purely civil channels. Accordingly, the strongest argument of the ministers of the state who were consulted to give interesting motives that determine policy and intermarriage was that it could only benefit the state, resulting in the augment of population, which is the first and greatest objective of the policy. Thus, it can be inferred that procreation was the legislative intent or laws on marriages. On the third argument, marriage between a man and a woman does not violate equal protection clause. In our jurisdiction, most equal protection cases are examined under reasonable test. For a classification to be valid, it must rest on substantial distinction, be germane to the purpose of our laws, not to be limited to present conditions only, and must apply equally to all members of the class. The provision of the family code limiting the marriage to only between man and woman couples satisfy these requirements. First, there is a substantial distinction between opposite sex and same-sex couples because only opposite sex partners can procreate without the intervention of third persons. Second, the classification is germane to the purpose of the law and that is to preserve the traditional concept of marriage a marriage that is geared towards procreation, which only a man and a woman can have through biological sex. Third, so long as procreation through sexual cooperation is the basic end of marriage, of marriage, questions in these provisions will still apply to future conditions. Fourth, the assailed articles equally apply to all opposite sex couples. In the case of Abakada Group, Guru, Partis versus Emita, the Supreme Court held that equal protection clause does not require the universal application of laws on all persons or things without distinction. This might in fact sometimes result in an equal protection. What the clause requires is equality among equals as determined according to a valid classification. Lastly, we also submit that there is no need to restore status quo. Gender equality as claimed by the LGBT community can be achieved even without marriage. There is no law which prohibits on how they behave, how they make relationships, and how they express themselves. In fact, there is a bill made by the Congress, the Soji Bill, which prohibits discrimination on the basis of sexual orientation and gender identity and expressions, and provided penalty, therefore. Moreover, if love is possible outside marriage, then there is no need for the members of the LGBT community to seek the legalization of same-sex marriage. Certainly, it is possible to love, to promise, to commit, to have children, to have intimate relations outside marriage. In other words, a loving family can be created outside marriage. There can also be consummation of relationships even without marriage. As an alternative, same-sex couples have the option to enter into contractual civil unions where there is more freedom, more choices without the burden of a marriage state. Compared to married heterosexual couples where proper relations can only be decided uh, during the prenuptial agreement, if there is no agreement was made, then the default is absolute community of property. Same-sex couples can actually make an agreement on their property relations anytime. They can also stipulate conditions provided it is not contrary to our laws. One advantage of our civil union contracts is that it can be changed or revoked at will. They can put it in a term of let us say 10 years as an example and renewable for another 10 years if they still would like to continue the relationship. There is also no burden of getting out of marriage by invoking psychological incapacity of the other partner. That is the
Okay, thank you for your speech, um, Mr. Speaker. Yes. Okay. Um, now I would like to quote one of the things that you stated during your speech that yes. um, it's beneficial to just have civil union that they will experience um, the same things with lesser compl complications as to being married. Yes. Okay. All right. So, in cases where um, there uh, are married couples, let's say homosexual couples, want rights to tax inheritance, insurance, immigration, adoption, custody, visitation rights, health care, and burial. How many contracts do you think they need to execute in order to have those in a civil union? Well, we have different laws which uh, tackle that. No, my rights. question is how many contracts do they need to sign in order to have rights to those in a civil union? They can put it in their contract. How many contracts? One contract, civil union. For each? No, just one contract for no, I mean, uh, with yes. as long as it is not contrary. With those to rights in a civil union, um, I would just like to raise this to everyone. In a civil union, they don't have rights to those in a civil union. What we're pushing for is same-sex marriage because they only need to sign one contract and they will have um, access to all of those rights. Again, okay, I'm proceeding to my next question. Um, when it comes to tradition, what is tradition for you, sir? Tradition is... Um, Can you cite some instances where tradition was not followed specifically by honoring LGBTQ same-sex marriage? Uh, there was no, uh, in the history, it was uh, the marriages conducted were also were only between man and woman. Are there marriages that were conducted between same sex in the history? I'm the one interpolating, so yes. please answer my question. Are you aware of separation of church and state? Yes. So, are the churchmen the ones making our laws? What? Are the churchmen the ones making our laws? No. Then who should we be the policy making to? The religious, the, the Congress. Exactly. All right. So tradition it also evolves from our beliefs and our practices. It's, but the Congress it's an evolving is concept. Evolving okay. Traditions. So going back to my question, um, are you aware of Article Article 15, um, yes. Section 3? Is there a presumption of constitution, uh, constitutionality um, for same-sex marriage here? Uh, uh, elucidate me on that article. Article 15, Section 3. Your Honors, good morning. Our first speaker has argued on three points on the necessity and beneficiality of legalizing same-sex marriage in the Philippines. First, that it is beneficial in reducing the stigma and the discrimination that the members of LGBT are having right now. Second, it has the benefit on the health, on the education, and third, on our economy. In addition to those mentioned, ladies and gentlemen, there's another reason, there's another reason why we should legalize same-sex marriage in the Philippines. That is because doing so would realize the provision under Article 16, Paragraph 1, of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, which provides that every person has the right to marry and form family. The Universal Declaration of Human Rights recognizes the inherent dignity and the equal and inalienable human right of every member of the human family. The Philippines being a signatory to this um, human rights, Universal Declaration of Human Rights, the Philippines then declares that it understands and adheres to these fundamental and inalienable rights as to its population. As a signatory to these legal documents, ladies and gentlemen, the Philippines is obliged to recognize and to apply laws in order to make these rights into fruition. Now, going into the arguments of practicability for the proposition. On our side, we argue that legalizing same-sex marriage is practicable on three grounds. First, that the limitations set upon the family code are actually unconstitutional because one, they violate substantial due process. Two, they violate an equal protection clause in the Constitution. Second argument, the Constitution, in its very definition, does not state that marriage should only be between a man and a woman. 
Third, assuming arguendo that indeed the framers of our constitution intended marriage to be that between of a man and a woman, then we implore and submit that the constitution, though definite and broad, is subject to change and revision because it is the embodiment of the will of the sovereign. Going into my first argument, there is actually a glaring unconstitutionality, more particularly in Article 1 and Article 2 of the Family Code, which defines and provides for the requisites that marriage must be contracted between a man and a woman. Why? Because it actually um, enroaches upon the right of the LGBT people to marry and the right under Article 15, Section 3, Paragraph 1 of the 1987 Constitution which provides that they shall have the right to form families based on their religious convictions. While there is a presumption of constitutionality in laws enacted by the Congress, however, such presumption would not lie before a strict scrutiny test. In the case of New Sounds Broadcasting Network Incorporated versus D, the Supreme Court held it would be necessary for the infringer to go to court and refute the presumption of unconstitutionality. In the case of City of Manila versus Lagio, the court held that it, it is an area where strict scrutiny is used. This is in cases where our fundamental rights are being enroached or being deprived, government will need substantive due process only if it can prove that the law is necessary to achieving a compelling government purpose. Ladies and gentlemen, your honors, our argument is that the Constitution protects one, the family as the foundation of nation, two, the marriage as an inviolable institution social institution, but it does not protect heterosexual marriages per se. There is actually no express prohibition in the Constitution that would not allow same-sex same -sex couples to marry. The said provisions are also a violative of the Equal Protection Clause. Why? The Equal Protection Clause provides that all people and things similarly situated must be treated alike like in the rights we confer to them and in the, in the obligation and responsibilities we impose upon them. However, there are valid classifications that indeed the other um, group has mentioned, but there are four requisites that must be followed. One substantive distinction. This is our argument that the provisions of the Family Code fails to prove that there is substantive distinction between homosexuals and heterosexual couples. Why? Because Article 68, 69, 70, 71, 220, 221, and 225 of the Family Code, which sets out the essential marital obligations of a married couple, can be performed by a homosexual exactly in the same manner that a heterosexual could. Another, there is a fourth requisite which says that it must apply to all members of the same class. A clear reading of the family code would give you an idea that procreation is not a requirement. Because if procreation was a requirement for marriage, then why is marriages between sterile people valid? Why is marriages between old people who are way beyond the age of reproduction valid? If they would use that as an argument against prohibit, for prohibiting same-sex marriage, then they are in violation of the fourth requisite, which means that all members must be treated, of the same class must be treated the same. Because homosexual couples are as, if heterosexual couples are incapable of procreating, then why are they not invalid and then the homosexuals are invalid? Proceeding now to my second argument, ladies and gentlemen. The letters of the Constitution does not actually prohibit uh, same-sex marriage. It was actually noted by Justice Leonel in the oral argumentation of the Falsis Petition. Justice Leonel said to the OSG, have you seen a specific express provision under the Constitution which says that same-sex marriage couple could not marry? The OSG said that it appears that there is actually no, however, the OSG would like to submit his memorandum. So therefore, we believe that there is actually no 
impediment constitutional wise that the Congress could actually pass a law now to legalize same sex marriage. And the last and final argument is that the Constitution, being a living document, an embodiment of our sovereign and our will, can be changed if we want to do so. Our Constitution actually has gone through five changes. The Malolos Constitution, the Jones Act, the 1935, the 1973, and the 1987, each embodying the time and the need, the times and the needs. So there's actually no reason for same-sex marriage to not be allowed, whether there is a constitutional provision or not. The affirmative would now rest its case, and we are now ready for interpretation. Article uh, Section 16, I think, of the UDHR. Yes. Uh, are you aware that it is only a common standard and it is not binding? It is binding, Mr. Speaker. No, it is not binding. What it is your proof that it is not binding? It, the UDHR respects our constitution. No, no it is binding. states cannot, it is binding, sir. can opt not to to follow the rules on the Well, UDHR. unfortunately, under public international law, since we are a signatory to that treaty, to that declaration, we are actually bound by it. Enough of that, Mr. Speaker. You, you said earlier in your speech that the right to equal protection has been violated and that there is no substantial distinction be between heterosexuals and members of the LGBT. Am I right? Yes. Would you agree with me that heterosexual couples can procreate? Yes, same as homosexual couples. How can homosexual couples procreate? Procreation is the ability to create a baby. A homosexual is not sterile. Therefore, he can procreate. He can go to either in vitro fertilization, surrogacy, and even in cases so where he would not allow that. A third person. Our laws and adoption could actually allow our homosexual couples to have that experience. Then why not change our laws in adoption? Why, why the laws in marriage? There's no need to change our laws in adoption. We need to change our laws on marriage to allow homosexual couples to have the same benefits as heterosexual couples. Why can homosexual couples, when their spouses die, can they inherit from their spouses? Can they can they inherit from their insurances? Yes. Can they ask they for medical actually if for they, expenses of if their they spouses? Place, they could not. If they place it in their will that that such danger. Since Are you aware danger. that only to, that there is only a limitation as to the free portion of of the legitimate of the interstate the estate of the dissident? Are you aware of that? Mr. Speaker, what the limitation is that? Is for the second speaker. Please make your. Uh, yes. Are you aware that uh, what uh, the the, cost, the intention of the the framers of the constitution on laws and marriage is that it is for procreation? I'm not aware of that, but I already made an admission on my on my speech that if so, the intention was that there is actually an opportunity for us to still allow same-sex marriage to pass by changing the constitution because the constitution, though rigid, can be changed. The constitution itself provides for the way through plebiscite. No, we cannot change the, the constitution. constitutional commission because the intent of uh, the framers of the constitution is to preserve the when we. The, when we go into a new constitutional convention, there's going to be a new intent of new framers of the Constitution, Mr. Speaker. My colleague had already laid out. I would just like to advance three more arguments in support of the status quo. First, the prohibition on same-sex marriage is not a violation of the due process of the law and the state is only acting within its valid exercise of police power. Second, that disallowing same-sex marriage does not violate freedom of religion. Lastly, that legalizing same-sex marriage will complicate the legal system of the Philippines, particularly in laws that are gender-specific. To reinforce our stand regarding the legalization of same-sex marriage, we reiterate, given the current state of affairs, that this is an impossible task, as to legalize such would be an attack to our Constitution. At face value, it might seem that the Constitution does not limit the definition of marriage to only a man and a woman. This is the contention of same-sex marriage advocates in the Philippines, and this is where they base they, their claim, among others. However, a closer inspection of the Constitution would tell us that marriage is just what it is, a union between a man and a woman. In the Forum versus Ombudsman and Chavez versus JBC, the Supreme Court reiterated the rule in statutory construction that the words of a statute will be interpreted in their natural, plain, and ordinary acceptation and signification 
unless it is evident that the legislature, the framers of fundamental law, intended a technical or special legal meaning to those words. So marriage is just marriage between a man and a woman. The framers, as evidenced by the record of the Constitutional Commission, which are the minutes, had intended for marriage to be between a man and a woman. After a thorough deliberation, they eventually decided that marriage would be understood in its ordinary sense, a universal definition long been held by tradition and customs, that marriage be a union between a man and a woman. This was not without contemplation of same-sex couples, as discussions of such unions were made during the convention. Ultimately, the traditional and universally accepted concept of marriage was upheld with 34 commissioners voting in agreement of the said definition and four who abstained. Hence, to allow a passage of a law legalizing same-sex marriage would be unconstitutional. Thus, the Family Code states, in reflection or in consonance with the Constitution, that marriage is a special contract of permanent union between a man and a woman entered into in accordance with law for the establishment of conjugal and family life. So it is within the bounds of the Constitution. Assuming arguendo that LGBTs have the right to marry, they claim that since they cannot marry a person of the same sex, that their right to due process is violated. We argue in the negative. There is valid justification for the deni denial of the said right as this is a valid exercise of police power. As pronounced in Carlos Superga versus DSWD and U.S. versus Turibio, rights sheltered by due process must bow to the primacy of police power because these rights must yield to the general welfare. In Morfe versus Muto, Police power is defined as the power to promote the general welfare and public interest, enacting laws to preserve public order and to prevent offenses against the state, and establishing the interactions of citizens to prevent conflict of rights. In other words, police power is valid when it serves, serves a legitimate national interest. This national interest is the preservation of the traditional concept of marriage as that between a man and a woman, the end of which is the hope of procreation or the biological potential, potential for procreation, which ultimately translates to the preservation and conservation or continuation of the species. This is not an arbitrary, whimsical, and capricious regulation or exercise of police power as this stems from both legal and scientific basis. In the case of Chi Ming Choi versus CA, the state gave premium to sexual intimacy to opposite sex couples as this is the ultimate expression and the culmination of living together, observing mutual love, respect, and fidelity, and rendering mutual help and support. The court goes on to say that in the natural order, it is sexual intimacy which brings spouses wholeness and oneness. Sexual intimacy is a gift and participation in the mystery of creation. It is a function which enlivens the hope of procreation and ensures the continuation of family relations. The court was thus constrained to sever the marital ties as the court found that the parties were trapped in the mire of unconsummated marital, marital obligations among others. This in spite of the proclamation of the state under section 12 of article 2 that the state recognizes the sanctity of family life and shall protect and strengthen the family as a basic autonomous social institution underscores just how great the state gives importance to the consummation of marriage and ultimately the hope of procreation. Something that same-sex couples can never achieve without the help from a party not part of the marriage, a marriage they hold to be exclusive, to be sacred, and claim to be fighting for in the first place. Same-sex couples do not need marriage as marriage presupposes the hope of procreation. We're not talking about procreation itself, but the potential for procreation. Sexual intercourse between persons of the same sex do not have the biological potential for procreation which is in the interest of the state as this is in consonance with the inherent right of the state to continue existence and self-preservation. So why does the state allow all opposite sex couples to still marry or those who are infertile or those who do not plan to bear children if their interest is in contemplation of procreation? Simple. It is because this, this couple still have the biological potential or as jurisprudence would put it, the hope of procreation. Old couples can procreate given the technology that we have nowadays, by the way. Infertile couples can also procreate with various scientific interventions and therapies without the need of any third party, by the way. The oppos opposing side may also think about those who marry and are not contemplating on bearing children. The government may not be able to compel couples to bear children, but what the government only dictates is that we bear persons of the opposite sex because they are biologically capable of bearing children, which is a leg legitimate governmental interest. Besides, just because an opposite sex couple plans or decides not to have a child does not take away their inherent and natural biological potential to procreate. They may decide voluntarily or by accident to conceive. Second argument, disallowing same-sex marriage does not violate freedom of religion. 
Proponents of the legalization of same-sex marriage observing religious doctrines and dogmas in support of such cannot claim that their religious freedom has been violated just because the state does not recognize it. Exercising one's religious freedom is neither all-encompassing nor absolute. The state, in its legitimate interest in preserving the traditional concept of marriage, may regulate secular matters such as civil marriages within its jurisdiction. Those who have that belief cannot impose their belief on the state as that would be in violation of the non-establishment clause. Last argument. Allowing same-sex marriage would complicate the legal system of the Philippines. Several gender-specific laws would be gravely affected if same-sex marriage would be legalized, which would undermine long-held legal principles, doctrines, and jurisprudence. How then would the court decide in custody cases where at present mothers are presumed to have the better ability to care for the child who falls within the tender age? If there would only be two mothers, or there would be two mothers, or there would only be two fathers instead. Who should be charged for adultery? Who should be charged for concubinage? concubinage? Who gets to have maternity leaves and who gets to have paternity leaves? These are just some of the laws that will be in limbo if we legalize same-sex marriages in the Philippines. In this kind of setup, the Equal Protection Clause would also then be violated as we would be by implication creating another class, one that is insusceptible and impervious to definitions and sanctions imposed by current laws. The negative side rest their case. Laws. Are you aware how many articles in the old civil code were repealed and amended when the family code was implemented? Yes, I am well aware of that. And are you not aware that there were a lot of articles too that were amended, repealed because the family the family code was implemented, which proves the fact that we can cower at the idea that it's going to be complicated. Because there is it's going to be complicated, that considering that these are different laws. Now, you're only talking about the civil code, which is just one set of codification. With all due respect, the family code is really the civil code. Um, <laughs> moving on. Anyway, you may, may mention that um, it is not, uh, you may mention that infertile and old people you could assist them through science, right? Yes, that's correct. That's why we say it's without any third party intervention. Yes, it's, that's why we say, you know, if 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 they, they can procreate, we can let them go to therapy, right? Now let me just qualify what I said earlier. However, Mr. Speaker, so. please please acknowledge if you made that statement that you would let them go to therapy. therapy We're not saying therapy. we let them go, but they may go if they want exactly. to. Exactly. If we can We're not let imposing. them, if we may let them go. Why can't we allow homosexual couples it's to have of the, the same of the access that you are asking to someone of their anger, their anger so sperm cells which is not part of the marriage, the marriage that you're talking about, how want to bear children in the family? How? Mr. Speaker, there you also mentioned... There is a condition of two people, Mr. Speaker, Speaker you're you also mentioned about sexual sperm intimacy. or egg cells from other people. You, you may mention about sexual intimacy, correct? No, I did not say that. You may... <laughs> You may mention about I don't think so. uh, ability to procreate. And your point is? Uh, do you think that homosexual couples are incapable of procreating? They are not They are not capable of procreating in the sense that if they are together, no, no, they will qualify, not be able to qualify. Can they or can they not procreate? They can procreate. They can procreate. And that means they are going right? to marriage because they can procreate. That's all. Thank you. Uh, it is... Uh, are the opponents I said that a homosexual can procreate. I would like to clarify that that though uh, homosexual couples can procreate, but it is not what is contemplated by our our constitution because procreation intended is the procreation between a man and a woman. Homosexual couples uh, cannot uh, because they are same sex. So it is not what is contemplated in our constitution. Also, uh, they may also mention about the tradi tradition about Babaylan. It is not conclusive because it is based on a foreign study. It is uh, not, not binding. So I would like to... Uh, I would like to say that we are still firm on our side that uh, legalization of same-sex marriage is not, uh, should not be allowed in the Philippines because it is not allowed uh, 
firstly in our constitution because our constitution uh, intention, the intention of our uh, of the framers of the constitution is to preserve the uh, traditional concept of marriage which is which is the union between man and a woman and also, there is no need to disturb the status quo because LGBT community can actually make, uh, can can enter, can enter into a family without marriage. Uh, they can consummate their relationship outside marriage because because they are not they are not um, prohibited to consummate their relationship outside outside marriage. That is actually highly uh, inaccurate. It, is, it violates um, the Constitution because the family code was based on invalid classification. There was no substantial distinction because homosexual couples are also able to procreate um, in other ways, such as the heterosexual couples, and they are also able to perform other roles and responsibilities in a marriage, same as the heterosexual couples. Second, they also contended that it violates police power. Now, police power um, cannot be used to commit injustice. The LGBT couples deserve to enjoy their right to marry and to form a family. And that is absolute. They cannot, police power cannot ever commit injustice to anyone. Third contention, tradition. They contended that approving same-sex marriage violates tradition. That is absolutely incorrect. Tradition is not absolute, and we are not mandatorily required to follow tradition. Let us take into consideration single parents, single mothers to be exact. Not so long ago, they were considered as social pariahs. They were looked upon, they were looked down upon by society because they were not married and raising kids on their own. Same as with cohabitating couples. Not so long ago, they were looked down upon and not allowed to go to church. Now, the single moms and cohabitating couples now have laws that protect them. And that is what we want for same-sex marriage. We want equal rights for everyone. They also contended that allowing same-sex marriage weakens family values and ultimately the marriage. There's actually been a study based in Australia saying that um, parenting of both heterosexuals and homosexuals cannot be predicted. There is never an absolute guarantee that heterosexuals can be better parents than homosexuals. It is also said that, um, let, it, let me know that homosexuality is immutable. It is not a mental illness. It is not a disease, and it is a not. Uh, it is not a decision. It just is. Okay, so it is not something that um, would target um, kids and weaken the family. Now, when it comes to weakening marriage, that is absolutely incorrect. The very fact that homosexuals want um, same-sex marriage to be legalized, it means we want marriage to be expanded 
we want marriage to be strengthened by allowing it to be celebrated by all types of people. Now, lastly, they contended that it complicates the laws. Ladies and gentlemen, let it be known that in every new law, it is almost a natural consequence that there are adjustments to legislations. The Filipinos do not cower in fear when it comes to change. As a matter of fact, there have been numerous constitutions, five to be exact, wherein we had to start all over again. If we have done it five times before, we should be able to do it again now. So legalize same-sex marriage, equal rights for all. Thank you. favor freedom and yet depreciate agitation are people who want crops without plowing the ground, they want rain without thunder and lightning, they want the ocean without the roar of its many waters. The struggle may be a moral one or it may be a physical one or it may be both, but it must be a struggle. Power concedes nothing without a demand. It never did it never will. Now let me just reiterate our points here. So the negative side believes with all certainty because it is also found in the Constitution that legalizing same-sex marriage is unconstitutional because that is the intention of the framers, although it was not explicitly stated, that was part of the deliberations during the Constitutional Convention. Now, regarding equal protection, they're saying that there is no valid classification. Now, we maintain that there is valid classification because homosexuals, two couples, two homosexual, uh, two homosexual people cannot procreate under the definition of marriage in the Philippines. As what my colleague here said earlier, a P and a P does not equal to a baby, nor a V or a B. If you get what I mean. Now, um, going back to what I was saying, so they're saying, they keep on saying that family, that this is all for family, they would want to build a family. Now this kind of family is actually not the kind of family that we are contemplating on here in the Philippines because when we say family, we're talking about two people, man and a woman. Now if you say that heterosexual, a heterosexual couple can be a family, then this kind of family cannot actually procreate, cannot continue the species of a state. Now, Population is actually a fundamental or a crucial element of the state. Now imagine, let's just put it this way, hypothetically, if you were to build a country and if you have two, if you have just a homosexual couple, how else would you be able to build a country in the first place? Right? You would need intervention from other people. Now say for example, if you can adopt, then you can adopt, but then it's linear. Then you will not actually be able to procreate. Now, Considering that the person you adopted is heterosexual, then that goes to show that heterosexual couples actually are distinct from homosexual couples because they can procreate. Now they keep on saying, they, they keep on citing studies saying that the passage of a law reduces the stigma, the benefit on, of mental health, and let me just tell you this, these studies are actually outside of the country. These, these are studies conducted by the U.S. Now let me just cite that these studies are inconclusive because these are correlational studies, meaning to say that this do not, does not establish cause and effect relationship. So it is not persuasive in any way, it's not conclusive. Um, at the same time, they keep on talking about economic benefit, but in fact, the training law has already modified the tax benefits. So there is actually no tax benefit to be derived if um, we allow same-sex couples to marry, considering that the Constitution allows that. Now, they also mentioned something about the UDHR, that the very same declaration actually said that the right to marry is between a man and a woman. How would you be able to reconcile that with your saying that there is a right to speak of in the first place, but that right is actually the right to marry between a man and a woman? Now going back, the family is the foundation of the society here in the Philippines, or even in any country for that matter. Now if you insist on changing the concept of marriage and family, the state would be in peril because, again, it will not be able to continue or perpetuate. Now the state will be non-existing in the future, that's the case. And talking about the pre-colonial times, talking about the pre-colonial times, um, it is based on research here in the Philippines that ever since the marriage is between man and woman up until the present. So 
the research about babaylans is actually not conclusive, and they also claim by babaylans are homosexuals, so in fact it's not. And they confuse homosexuality to um, the, the right or the, the religious, um, how do you call that, the, the religious role of babaylans during those times. So I think with that, we rest, we rest our case. So that's all, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, what is at stake in our debate today is not our reputation, it's not our grades, it's not winning or losing. It's the welfare of the Filipino citizens, LGBTQ or not, and the future LGBTQ members of the community. Lest we agree that there are actually plenty of differing opinions about this very polarizing uh, proposition. However, we would like to submit to the opinion of Justice Mariano del Castillo in the landmark case of Al Ladlad Party List versus Comilet. Justice Cas del Castillo then said, our democracy does not allow using religion and moral views of one part of the community to prohibit consideration of the values of the other part of the community. We could not cower at the idea of complexing our existing laws so that we just don't proceed and give everyone social justice. When women were not given the rights, and when they eventually were given such rights, a couple and plenty of other articles, existing legislation, would also, was also amended, repealed, in order to reflect the current change, the current good, that we want to have in our society. Let's not cower over complexities of law. Let us believe in the wisdom and the intelligence of our policymakers, because our policymakers are, are our representatives. We are the sovereign. Also, they always say that they can always say no to same-sex marriage as a means of police power. However, that power is not absolute. A long line of Supreme Court cases, landmark cases, states that police power can never be used by government to perpetrate injustice. There is injustice by not allowing same-sex couples the same benefits under the marriage between heterosexual couples. And they say, how can there be a family with just a mother and a mother and a father and a father? The captain of the opposing team just said that a family is composed of two, a mother and a father. Are we supposed to insult the institution of the families of single parents? Are we to say that single mothers and single fathers are not families? Is that what we are trying to say? Is that the message we are trying to convey? Is that the society we are representing? If it's so, I don't want to be part of that society. They said that the dream law has already been amended and there's actually no more need to legalize same-sex marriage because economically wise, there's already no tax benefit. They probably weren't listening because the economic benefit of homosexual relationship, of same-sex marriage, does not emanate from taxation laws only. The economy would become robust because two couples previously working individually will now have to pull resources, become better citizens, and be better utilized in the society. And I hope we sent you a message that this is not about making one greater than the other. 
This is only making one equal to the other because that's how we are created regardless of your religion. We are all created equal. Thank you. Okay, yun lang guys. I just hope you find the debate very interesting. And I also hope na you find some points from the affirmative and the negative side. So guys, after po ng debate is yung announcement na po na nanalo na team, tsaka yung best debater, tsaka best speaker po for the debate. Hindi na po, hindi ko na po nakuna ng video, but yung nanalo po na best debater and best speaker po is yung negative speaker number 2, si Mr. Francis. So siya po ang nanalo na best debater as well as the best speaker. Tapos, for the team naman po, yung nanalo na best debating team is yung affirmative na side. Again, it doesn't mean na nanalo yung affirmative side is siya na po yung pinapanigan ng aming school or ng aming department. No. Nanalo lang po sila dahil maganda yung argument na binigay nila and they were able to defend every questions from the other side. So, yun lang guys. I hope na you were able to find this one informative. If you have any questions about this video, if you have questions about me, about law school, about law student life, then please comment that one below. If you have other suggestions for my next videos, please po advise me kung ano po isasuggest nyo. And if I said something wrong, if you were offended in a way sa naging video today, please let me know po so I can make some videos that is friendly to everybody. And again, I encourage everyone to please follow me in my social media accounts. Lahat po yun ay nakalink below for my Instagram. Twitter, Facebook for my Facebook page or even for my Gmail for my email you have that one sa baba. So again if you are new to this channel please don't forget to click subscribe and click the notification bell sa tabi na subscribe or you can just simply click the click here just circle dyan sa my corner. So again guys I will see you in my next video.